I am once again <laughs> reporting live from my makeup desk. I'm getting ready for Christmas Eve dinner. We are going to Aunt Janet's again, just like we did for Thanksgiving. And for anyone who's Italian American, like Christmas Eve is it. For us, like the family, like the big celebration is tonight. So I'm getting ready. I'm going to head over to Aunt Janet's a little bit early to help with the charcuterie. I have to admit, I am like un unprepared for the holidays this year. They just kind of sprung up really fast. I wasn't prepared. And like financially, this is the toughest financial year that I've had since I was like 17. It's been like almost two decades. Like I've, um, I've never had to worry about like, how am I going to buy gifts for people? And, um, this year that was, that was real for me. That, that was something that, um, you know, I wasn't able to get people what I wanted to get them. And I know it's not about the money that you spend. I'm so lucky to have such a great family and I'm not to say that we're perfect. <laughs> you know, we have our fair share of shit that, you know, ups and downs and, and egos and fights and disagreements and, you know, nothing's perfect. No one's perfect. But uh, at the end of the day, what I have with my family and like what I'm going to have tonight and the, the love that's going to be around the table, um, I don't want to cry because I'm about to put on my makeup, but I know, I know I'm so blessed to have that. And that's, what's most important. And this year has really been like a big reframing of, you know, not relying on money, um, to, to be the source of the happiness for the holidays and to also put creativity into it. I made everyone an eye cream, <laughs> uh, because that's what I could afford to do. Just It's just different this year than it has been for me. So leaning into that and, and allowing that experience to happen, allowing those feelings to come up this week. I talked about it a little bit on Twitter. I had a lot of shit come up this week. I also talked about it in my video from last Friday. Talking about the ego, I had a lot of a lot of ego stuff surrounding that whole financial stuff there's also a lot of um personal relationship stuff that came up for me and it was this week was a really hard week i i see the light at the end of the tunnel but the the past few days the past week really has been um had been really rough so it didn't leave me a lot of time to prepare for christmas and I'm normally someone who wants to have all her presents wrapped and under the tree by like the 10th or the 15th, the latest, and I'm still wrapping today. So that's crazy to me. This is the reality I'm dealing with right now. It actually looks a lot better than it is because that tissue paper and that tissue paper is covering a bunch of stuff, but... Yeah, I am unprepared this year. I also talked about it in my entrepreneurial journey. My first job ever was a present, a gift wrapper at a collectible store around the holidays. So I happen to slay at Christmas wrap. I am the Christmas wrapper. <laughs> I am so good at it. And I, I really enjoy it. Like I enjoy putting it together. I always like find pink Christmas wrap. Actually... I'm dreaming of a pink Christmas is what I like. I like pink Christmas. I lived in Miami for quite some time. I like flamingos and palm trees for Christmas. So that's reflective in my, in my Christmas wrap. I'm excited to eat. This is my favorite meal of the year. We look forward to this day all year. Yeah. And we're Italian American, so it's not, it's not super traditional. It's called the Feast of the Seven Fishes and we eat a lot of fish tonight <laughs> that's what that's about um there's like some of my favorite foods and some of my favorite people you know i love my family so i'm very excited i'm excited to bring you along with me and show you some of our traditions and just 
just to celebrate, you know, we, we have our health, we have each other, we have food, we have homes, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, not good things going on in the world right now. And I'm not going to harp on them, but it, it, I know I'm not the only one <laughs> experiencing financial troubles. Um, you know, that's been hard for a lot of people this year, talking about having each other and our health. You know, people lost a lot of loved ones this year and it's been, it's been a year. So just really counting the blessings that we have instead of focusing on, you know, what I don't have, which was uh, <laughs> something I had to do all week. I really, I really sat in my feelings all week. Um, but I'm glad that I was able to allow myself that space because I, you know, I talk about feelings. I talk about feelings a lot because it's so important to feel our feelings and not push them away. If we push them away, they start to come up in a lot worse situations for us. Um, so it's just really... It's really important to allow the feelings to come up and to feel them, but to not identify with them. Like, I let my feelings come up that I, you know, I didn't have the money and all those frustrations that came along with it. But I didn't allow it to create my reality. I didn't become like, woe is me. And um, I didn't really fall into the trap of being like, oh, I'm broke. I'm going to be like this forever. This is you know, this is, this isn't, this is a temporary reality for me. I know that. So just allowing, allowing myself to feel what it felt like without letting it pull me, um, into a depression or pull me into, um, worse feelings about myself. I don't have, like, I have a lot of things to feel good about myself for. So I want to make sure that I focus on those things, the good things and, and give myself the space to, allow those good things to come up and um you know at the same time living in in the world that we live in it can't all be love and light all the time especially especially in the world that we live in so allowing myself to have the experience of not feeling so great about myself and you know looking at some of the choices I've made that led me to here and reflecting on where maybe I was hurting myself and where I could maybe do a little bit better in the future. I'm not doing full on curls today because I just don't have the time. So I'm just doing a little bit of curls because a little bit of curls is easy. So this is my, this is my 10 minute curls as opposed to my 30 minute curls. I'm gonna put on a little bit of makeup. I had to steam my red satin pants. The good thing about crying all week and being emotionally drained was that I am now fitting into my size six pants again. So that feels great. I fit into some size six red satin pants just in time for Christmas Eve. And that's fun. So those are my 10 minute curls. I wore makeup last night. I don't like to wear makeup more than once a week. I like to keep my makeup to once a week just for my skin. I'm gonna be 36 in two weeks. I'm gonna be 36 in 13 days. <laughs> and I have not had any work done, despite people thinking I had rhinoplasty or like I had lip injections. Um, my teeth are veneers. And if you're interested in learning about why I got veneers, definitely hit subscribe because I'm going into a video about why I needed veneers. I needed, some of my teeth aren't real kind of like the uh the trauma that was surrounding that was a lot there was a lot of stuff that that was surrounding my my teeth yeah, definitely hit subscribe i'm going to talk about how i have the best dentist in the literal world he is amazing no one ever believes that i have veneers but yeah backtracking no work done i'm going to be 36 a big part of that is because i don't wear makeup a lot and you know what happens is like makeup clogs your pores and it, it a lot of this stuff is just made with terrible ingredients and it fucks up your skin and then you have to wear more makeup and then I like what I found was that like I was wearing makeup a lot and then I didn't like what I looked like 
when I didn't have makeup on. And that made me really sad. So I stopped wearing makeup. I fell in love with my natural face. And now when I put makeup on, it's like an enhancement as opposed to like when I don't wear makeup, it being scary. And I think that's a big thing that has helped me just like with self-love and and growth and acceptance is just accepting my face as is and uh, putting more putting more uh, stock into skincare than makeup. It sets like unrealistic expectations of ourselves, of others. I, you know, I try to show up on here as authentic and natural as possible. Very often I'm not wearing makeup in my videos. I do pencil in my eyebrows because my eyebrows are so blonde that you can't see them. <laughs> like they're just not there, especially in the summer. Once I have a tan, my my skin is darker than my hair and you cannot see my eyebrows. When I was a kid, my parents used to say that my eyebrows went on vacation for the summer. <laughs> So that's, that's one thing I know we all have a thing. You know, my thing is like my eyebrows, my eyebrows and my nails. I always have to have my nails done. These are my Christmas nails. Right now we're in Mercury retrograde. So our pointer fingers are our Mercury fingers. So I've been dazzling those up a little bit more. Um, we're also in a Jupiter retrograde. So my Jupiter fingers are, <laughs> oh, hey. Um, I, yeah, I just, you know, to... To add a little bit of groundedness with the red but it's also christmas so i've been having a lot of fun with my with my manicures lately i just use my fingers for everything like i have brushes but like whatever like i said i don't really wear me i'm not a makeup girl i am not a makeup girl do not follow me for makeup tips nah. i'm gonna add to this a little bit fix it a little that's why i didn't turn this off even though it's been it's been clicking away this whole video if you've heard that clicking i just want to shout out conair i've had this it's like 17 dollars. this curler i've had it for years i had the the one prior to this for like over a decade you do not need to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars I let my hair air dry today, so like, promise you, you do not need to spend all that money on a curler or like a hair styling product. You don't need it. You don't need it. We can do without. So I'm going to go get dressed and then I'll show you my final look before I head to Aunt Janet's. So I really wanted to wear this like green top with these red pants, but I'm not really loving it. I'm not, I'm not loving it. So we're going to. We're going to change the top. So I settled on this top with these pants and then I'm going to put like a little vest over it. And I'm a fan. I like it. I'm liking the way it works. I love a, a shirt with a bow like this. Big fan. Before I knew it, we were all at Aunt Janet's and just like Thanksgiving, she had everything set up so beautifully for us all. And truthfully, I didn't really record as much as I would have liked to because I was just so present with my family and spending time with them and catching up with some of them that I haven't seen in a while that I just wasn't really on my phone a lot and I didn't record as much of the night as I would have liked to. But I'm still new at this vlogging stuff. <laughs> but you know, as I mentioned earlier, this year just so much was put into perspective for me and my time with my family and especially at the holidays is really just so much more important to me than anything else. But it is also Christmas Eve, so the food was definitely still important. I helped set up the charcuterie and my mom made my favorite cold seafood salad. It's a Christmas Eve must have. And unfortunately, I didn't get to video everything before we all dug into it, but there was shrimp and baked clams and just all different types of antipast. And then it was time for dinner and Please do not tell our Italian ancestors, but we had most of the dinner catered this year. My uncle made some good seafood um, pasta. 
We also had chicken parm and some red meat, which is actually sacrilege for Christmas Eve for Italians, but it was still all really delicious. And I want to shout out my mom for the chicken parm because it was the only thing that there was no leftovers for. And I, as you can see, I filled up my plate. And before we knew it, it was time for coffee and dessert. And we really go all out for dessert at the holidays. It's actually pretty insane, but this is like my favorite form of insanity. Dessert is one of my favorite food groups. And I just, again, wanted to shout out my Aunt Janet and to my Uncle Rich for hosting yet another beautiful holiday. And I would also love to know some of your holiday traditions if you're watching this video. Please feel free to drop a comment below and share what is important to you around the holidays, maybe some of your family holiday traditions. I can't wait to read them all. And I will see you all next year.